Good morning, church family. Thanks for being with us again this morning. In school, I liked English, loved history, science was okay, PE and lunch were great, but I did not like mathematics. It was my weakest subject. My only B in all of high school was, when it messed up my 4.0, was in one semester of math. I had a teacher, however, who loved math. He would read math theory books, sometimes in class, that were thick enough to choke a mule. He'd philosophize with us about how the number zero actually held value and other things I couldn't possibly wrap my brain around. Regardless of our math skill, we could all agree on this. You will only get the correct answer, the sum, when you do the math the right way. The Christian life is a life of addition, subtraction, and multiplication. 2 Peter 1, 5-9 shows us two possible results of our addition in our Christian lives or our lack thereof. The first is a fruitful life in the knowledge of Christ, and the second is a backslidden life to the point where we can literally forget that we're even saved. 2 Peter 1, 5-9 says this, it says, And besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge temperance, to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall ne neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh or doesn't add these things, doesn't have these things, is blind and cannot see afar off, off and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. I want to bear fruit in my life. I want to grow in my knowledge of the Lord. I want to abound. I don't want to backslide. And I'm sure you think the same way. Here we see some principles that will help our lives to add up to what the Lord wants us to be. First, I see the importance of the right textbook. One reason our society is the way it is today is because of the instruction they receive in the textbooks of our education system from K4 all the way through university. They're educated with an atheistic, humanistic worldview. It's no wonder why the world acts the way it acts. Not too long ago, the French Transportation Authority gave dimensions for the building of 2,000 trains for their public rail system. Those working on the trains completed the trains and delivered them, but something was wrong. Every train they had built was too wide for the platforms they had to land on. What had happened? I'll tell you what happened. The math was wrong, it didn't add up. The Transportation Authority had given the wrong measurements and the wrong instructions and billions of dollars were lost. If the sum of our lives are going to be right, we need to get our instruction, our numbers, from the right source. Of course, that's the Word of God. No bad numbers, no fake news, no wrong instructions, no dangerous paradigms, just God's instruction for successful Christian living. Secondly, we need to use the right tools. The verses preceding this talk about the tools that we have been given for successful living once we became Christians. There's a story about a warship that was dubbed the most powerful warship of its time. It had 64 bronze cannons. It was armed with 30 men to man the ship. The first day of its maiden voyage, it sunk. How? Well, come to find out, it was built thicker on one side than it was on the other. They came to find out also through further study that the crew on one side had used Swedish measurements and instruments while the ones on the other side used Amsterdam measurements. The Swedish instruments were short by an inch for every foot that they measured. Because of the tools that they used, the math did not add up and it sunk. What tools are you using? What are we reading, watching, listening to? Who's sharpening us? How are we being sharpened? The tools that we use are very, very important. Finally, we need to use the correct order of operations. As any math teacher will tell us, we don't just throw the numbers together and get the correct sum. There's an order of operations that must be followed to come to the correct conclusion. This passage shows us the importance of this principle as we add to our faith. Many try to add knowledge before they add virtue. It doesn't add up. Many want godliness before they learn patience. It doesn't add up. Let's get into God's Word and add to our faith, line upon line, precept upon precept, to become what God wants us to be. If we have the right textbook, God's Word, we use the right tools, 
those things that will help as we seek to apply God's word and we begin to apply according to the Bible those things that we've learned, it's a promise. We will not backslide, but we will be fruitful and grow to know Christ more and to be more like him. Hope this little thought was a help. God bless. Have a good rest of the week.